We're in trouble with the cops. We have overstayed our Schengen visa. They could literally take our boat off us. We could never be allowed back into Europe again. God, I love, I love bureaucracy. 17 knots of forecast and we got 30. I tell you what, I'd rather be hand steering into 30 knots than uh, lining up at one of those government buildings waiting to be given a Schengen visa extension. I'm Elena and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Bagafong. <laughs> we've been sailing around the world for the last six years now, and recently, it's like we're seeing everything for the first time through a new set of eyes. This is our little boy, Lenny. Click the subscribe button to join our voyage every Monday. Did you overstay your visa? Hey, Lenny, did you overstay your visa? I think you did, don't, don't you run away. Don't run away from your problems. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Madeira. That's where we last sailed to, and we just got here and... Um... We're in trouble with the cops. So we have overstayed our Schengen visa, which means we've been in European waters for too long. That's because of COVID, but I should have let the authorities know before now. So I need to go and plead my case. Um, and I'm a bit off my game at the moment because of uh, my double plugger, as we call them in Australia, has popped out of its little area. I mean, you don't want to be going into the policeman's headquarters without one shoe on. Uh, and it tends to come out at the most inopportune of times. Alright, success or not? We've come what I believe is full circle. I think they've given me, I went to the place and they said, no, I won't even see you. I didn't even get past the security guard. And they gave me some contact details, which I think that you've already emailed Elena like a month ago. So. <laughs> so this is good. When you get caught staying illegally in Europe, you will totally be deported to your home country. <laughs> We're gonna totally deport you. <laughs> Deportation is always followed by other consequences. To be honest, I'm not too concerned about this, but I know, I know Elena definitely is. You don't seem to worry about anything, but they could literally take our boat off us. We could never be allowed back into Europe again. And I certainly want to come back for my 30th birthday for a girl's trip. <laughs> There's so many things that they could do and we are here illegally. I've never been in a country illegally. I don't like that feeling. No one said we couldn't leave the boat, so we drove 50 minutes to a national park to clear our heads. Our next meeting with the big dogs <laughs> was tomorrow morning. Pasta. Pasta. It is Monday morning. That behind me is the Loja do Cidado. And I was sent there from the marina. Uh, so I, I went and saw all the various people that I needed to, apparently. They said, you need to get in there Monday morning to sort out your visa. I went in there and they said, oh, no, 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 no. Because of COVID, there's been a blanket extension of all, of all those sorts of visas, Schengen visas within Portugal. 
then you need to send in a bunch of emails uh, to just show proof that you've been trying so that when you get pulled up in the next country, you can go, well, I sent a bunch of emails and made a bunch of phone calls and wasn't helped out. So that's where we're at at the moment. Quick, um, hurry back. Let's go sailing. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, Shmoo. See, See ya. Apparently, it's like this for another right. month and... It'll change in the Canary Islands, so we need to go see them again in the Canary Islands. But that's pretty damn good. God, I love, I love bureaucracy and walking around and around in circles. It's my second favorite thing to do on a Monday morning. We get to keep our boat, Lenny. I was just saying to Riley that I'm so ready to leave. We've only been here for a few days now. A lot of people here, there's a lot of boat traffic. Um, I don't know, we're just ready to be free again and to go to some less busy places and just be on anchor. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I keep taking wrong turns, there's too many people. Every time Lenny falls over, 10 people go, oh! and the, <laughs> the highways are dangerous. <laughs> we're sailing, we're getting out of here in, in the 40 next minutes. five minutes. Five minutes or 40? Whatever, we're leaving. We're good to go now. We are. Sweet. So we're just about to hoist the mainsail. We have no wind here, but um, behind this point up here, we can see a bunch of white caps, which means there's wind. And yeah, we're just gonna throw it all up. We're gonna be beating into it, that means. But that's okay. Uh, we're just really looking forward to being out on the water and moving. Engine's off. It's a really good one. Must be an Algarve in orange. So nice. There is a wall of wind coming up and the wind's gonna switch directions so we're gonna immediately, <laughs> immediately tack. Shit's gonna get crew. And we're guessing it's just the rounding of the island that Lenny, the wind rounding the island. Um, it was gusting to more than 17, but yeah. He doesn't care at all. No idea. Good, Len? So here's the truth. Riley and I didn't want to complain in this episode any more than we already have, but some things you don't know is our port side engine is kaput. Uh, recently, the autopilot is kaput. So, Riley has been hand steering. I tell you what, I'd rather be hand steering into 30 knots than uh, lining up at one of those government buildings waiting to be given a Schengen visa extension. We're about to eat some bread and olive oil because um, we still have no cooking gas. Yeah. We have the time to fix problems like these when they happen and the resources. I mean, for a lot of people, a broken autopilot and engine would be the end of their trip. Depending on uh, how long it's going to take to fix these things, we will be in one spot for a little while. Keep you posted. You might think that I've fixed the autopilot, but I haven't. If you set the sails quite well, then uh, <clears throat> put the steering in the correct position, then the boat holds itself. And I've managed to do that. 55 degrees, true wind angle, apparent wind angle, 42. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. No autopilot. The S means standing by. <laughs> I don't know what the S means. 
What does the S mean? Standby. Does it? Yeah. S, A, and W. W is wind, A is auto, S is steering. You steer. It's like you steer. Yeah. <laughs> on a troubled street, on your darkest dark. That's where you make me. Obrigado. This marina appears to be like inside a big dark mountain that's like caved in, if that makes sense. So the marina crew aren't replying on the radio or their phone number. So we're gonna have to go in not knowing if it's a port or starboard side attack. And there's the chance that our port side engine will completely stop working. It's working but there's no water coming out of the exhaust which is really bad it could overheat it's what we kind of have to use it to get in there using one engine is a bit tricky can't do like a full circle in there with not much speed um. Just give me a shout. You can't count on me. Sign the dotted line, but don't pay no mind. You can't count on me. Sign the dotted line. Thanks for getting us here. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Climb and everything. We're gonna go get some food. Would you like some food? You hungry, mate? Yes. Uh, I fixed the autopilot. I sent a message to the Ultramer owners group because this was flashing. So all I needed to do was to go into here and reset the alarm. Nice. Very simple. But you had fun today, didn't you? I, I had the best fun ever, hand steering all day. It was great. All right, you're going to turn it all off now? Let's go eat some food. Yeah. I don't know when this restaurant closes. Everyone. Had a wonderful night's sleep here in the marina. Did a workout this morning. I have been lazy as hell lately. I'm not too happy with myself. Riley set off this morning. Uh, we met a nice local man who's offered to take Riley around to get a bunch of stuff done. As you know, we have a very large list of things to do, including filling the gas bottle. We have to do a food shop. I am starving. The steering cable. We need to fix the port side engine. We've got to fix the outboard. That is not working either. And the water maker. The water has been tasting quite salty lately, but Riley changed the filter recently, so it not makes sense, but we've got to get to the bottom of it because our water tastes quite gross. Andre and I pulled the outboard apart before we left last week, and sometimes you can, because there are two spark plugs, just swap positions with each other. It's not the spark plugs, so that spark plug A goes into spark plug B's position, and spark plug B goes into spark plug A's position. This didn't work. Having picked up a new pair in Funchal, I swapped them out today, which didn't work. So I guess Gareth Keenan's investigations would have to continue. I jumped in the sail bag to be cool, but this is very uncomfortable. So that, that rope that's frayed at the end there, it's not frayed, it's like burnt because of the enormous loads that are placed on it. Um, I'm gonna leave because we've only got to get from 
here to the Canary Islands uh, before we start doing some big sails across the Atlantic. So I wouldn't leave that if we were gonna go across the Atlantic and I'll make sure I'll keep an eye on it and before we go, I'll shorten it, but it's, it's okay for now. Apart from that, the mainsail looks pretty good. I lubed it up so it um, slides up nicer. And I've checked all of the rope and sail for wear and tear and uh, everything looks pretty good. What up? We're on a hike this evening. <laughs> we are. Oh, I forget the name of this place, but I'm gonna look at the sign on the way back. And uh, it's three kilometers to the end, and it's um, very Canary Islandy. It's not so green like the Azores have been. And, um, it's more volcanic, feels, isn't I it? I can feel like we're getting. I feel like we're getting close to the Canary Islands. This is what I remember the Canary Islands to be like. The point of St. Lawrence is the easternmost point of the island of Madeira. It's a seven kilometre loop to the end and back, but there's no way we'd make it that far with the little man. That is the anchorage that we want to anchor. But the free diving there is epic. Since 1982, Headland is a nature reserve. Every step and turn around a new corner was a spectacular view of the Atlantic Ocean and the giant layered rocks that towered over us. This camera is so good in low light that it doesn't look dark right now, but it is dark. <laughs> it's very hard to see. I should be looking at my feet and not at you guys. What's that? I need to eat more carrots. I need to eat more carrots. Lenny gets more snuggly and far better behaved, the less safe he feels. <laughs> <laughs> so as it's getting dark, he's on top of my shoulders, hugging me and really keen to start making some miles. <laughs> Aww. Aww, good boy. <coughs> you had to get in your chair now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go with Dad. Mom, Mom, Quick. Mom. Remember when the days were young and all What's going on? Every, it's like every different town in Europe has a different gas fitting connection. Why not make it uniform? Why, why, why does Tom cry? Well, looks like another cold salad for dinner. <laughs> Never thought I'd get sick of salad, but if I have to eat one more, I might just perish. Join us next time as a storm hits our marina. This one is pretty nuts. You ready for it? Boom! My gosh! You going out? Lenny, we're going out. Of course, everybody knew. Today his door will only open to his wine and his drink.